God wants you to prosper, not somebody else, not someone down the street, but he wants you to prosper. He promises to be our exceeding great reward. God has a great plan for you. Third John, verse two, it says, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Well, hello, I am Dr. Shante Haynes again with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, and it truly is my pleasure to bring you an encouraging word this afternoon. We're still talking about Lord, strengthen my faith. We're still in the series, and this is part eight. If you have not listened to one through seven, go back and listen to those so that your faith will also be increased. Lord, strengthen my faith. Let's go ahead and bow. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you. We bless and we honor you, God, because you do see us and you do know us. We thank you, Lord, that in everything, regardless of the season, you know where we're in and you know what we're going through, but you also have the ability to see us all the way through it to the very other side. Thank you, Lord, for loving us enough to always have a great plan for each and every one. We'll bless you always. We'll honor you always. In Jesus' name, we do pray and give you thanks. Amen. Well, again, this is the eighth component of the Lord Strength of My Faith series. And today it's all about to be seen, to be seen. That's exactly what we want to do. And we want to make sure that we are truly seen. How can I trust in someone and trust in their promises if they don't know me, if they don't see me? So today we're going to Luke chapter number 19. And I'm going to begin at the first verse. And it says, he entered Jericho and was passing through, he being Jesus. There was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but he was not able because of the crowd. Key point there. Since he was a short man, another key point. So running ahead, he climbed up a sycamore tree to see Jesus since he was about to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down because today I must stay at your house. So he quickly came down and welcomed him joyfully. All who saw it began to complain. He's gone to lodge with the sinful man. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, look, I'll give half of my possessions to the poor Lord. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I'll pay back four times as much. Today, salvation has come to this house, Jesus told him, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save the lost. Oh, beautiful passage of scripture that we're going to just dive right into. Notice in this scripture that Jesus is passing by, but Zacchaeus was so determined that he wanted to see who Jesus was. Notice he did not ask what other people thought of Jesus. He didn't ask their opinion of him. He wanted to see for himself who Jesus was. And yes, there were some hindrances. The crowd was one in his inability or what some might call his disability in his being short that he could not see above them. But let's look at that. The crowd was in the way and was a hindrance to him. But sometimes other people's perceptions or their preferences hinder us from seeing truly who Jesus is or who God is and thereby then hinders our understanding and our perception of ourselves. I'm going to say that one again. Sometimes other people's perceptions or their preferences hinder our perception of God, who God is, and then also our perception of ourselves. 
And we don't want that to happen. We don't want the approval addiction. We don't want to always be looking to see what other people are saying instead of seeing ourselves through the eyes of the cross. That would hinder us. And then when it comes to our inability, what we think we're shortchanged by, what our weaknesses are, God already knows our strengths as well as our weaknesses. So he has the ability then to then strengthen us. He says, when you are weak, then I am strong and I can show forth through you in your infirmities, you ought to joy in that. So if we have a whole different perspective, a perspective of being above and not beneath, then we will be able to move forward. Notice that he climbs up a sycamore tree. He did a couple things in here. He took action. He ran ahead of the crowd because he needs to get a different perspective. He needs to get ahead of where everybody else is. And I'm gonna say this here, don't allow someone because of their mentality, their mindset to hinder you from moving ahead of them. Low level thinking should not be your thought process. So when they go low, you should go high right? So we want to then run ahead, but then he also climbed up. So he went higher. Instead of hanging around with turkeys, we want to soar with the eagle. So we need to stop the fighting and the chaos and the confusion that we have. Now I will say this in the midst of a Thanksgiving season, that some of us are in that position where we're not feeling that we're seen. Everybody wants to be seen. They want to be heard. They want to have a voice because that's the ultimate fear is that nobody cares. Bottom line, we think they don't care because they don't see us and they don't know us and they don't hear us. But Jesus like takes all of that off the table and he says, no matter what you are going through, no matter what season you are in, as we move into this Thanksgiving time period or all of these holiday seasons where your family might not look the way it used to look, or your friendships might not be intact like they were, or the relationships or the job, or a whole lot of things could have changed. But some people are having concerns, and I hope that's not you, that you know there's a sadness that's lulling because of a void in your life, or there is something that is happening where you feel that you are left out and you're not seen by others and you're not cared for. Well, I came by to let you know that God cares. He sees you and he knows you and he cares. And that fear that we have going into the season, into this particular time period, I don't want you to be depressed or to be suicidal or to think, oh, I've got to escape with some other addiction or some other vice. Instead, lean into Jesus run and seek after him. It says in the 10th verse, he came to seek and to save. And to seek is simply to look for or to strive to find. Notice that God is not only striving to find us, but Zacchaeus was, was striving to find Jesus. He did something to get his attention. He went to go find it probably wouldn't have mattered if Jesus had passed right on by him. He had an opportunity with his own eyes to see him. So what are you going to do to seek after the lover of your soul? In the midst of all of this, during this particular season, be thankful and grateful for the things that God has given you. It might not be what you want, but he knows exactly where you are. And he has a great plan to get you to the other side. Because see, the opposite of fear that we want to look at, you know, thinking nobody sees us or hears us or cares about us. The fact of the matter is where faith comes in is that we trust that the one that said he does is able to perform the things he says he can perform. We trust in him as a person. We trust in his word. We trust in his promises. We trust in him, our trust, our reliance, our dependence upon God, giving credence to his word. Well, if we're going to increase our faith, we have to know that God does see us. So we don't worry about other people's preferences. We want to see ourselves through the eyes of the cross, see ourselves the way that God sees us. Because see, this crowd was a hindrance, one, not only because of their bodies in the way, 
But then there are hindrance because they turn around and they say to Jesus, look, he's going to stay with some sinners. They identify Zacchaeus as a sinner because he was a tax collector because of his job. And typically in that time period, the tax collectors could charge whatever they want. And their assumption or their perception was the fact that they were being stolen from and they were stealing. They were the thieves. They were the sinners. But we're not going to go into the fact that he was willing to repay or restore when he says extort them. That's because some people thought that they were being thieves and they were taking away. And in Exodus, it identifies that the restoration was supposed to be four times the amount, but he was also willing to give to the poor. And Jesus says, salvation has come to your house. I see your heart. I see your mind. I see your thought process behind this. And your heart is so pure that you really want this. And I came to seek you, not only to seek, but to save. Save here is to deliver and to make whole. So anybody who's feeling like their life is in shambles and different pieces and all splatter because somebody has broken your heart or somebody has torn apart your family or torn down the things that you have been building up, your business might be gone or you're just feeling like you're in pieces and in shambles. He came to make you whole. But it also says that in that word, save, to preserve you safe from danger, from loss, and from destruction. So if you feel that there is a loss or there is some destruction that has happened, God is the one that is able to put it all back together and make it whole and make it look beautiful. You know, in many instances, we see broken pieces of glass around, and sometimes that glass is put into what we call a mosaic and it looks beautiful. Sometimes it's put into a stained glass window and all those little pieces with all the little seams that are there end up making something absolutely beautiful. That's what God wants to make of your life. He sees you. He understands you better than you understand yourself. He knows all about you, but at the same time, he cares. And that's where we rely our faith. Our faith is in God that he not only sees us and loves us, but he has an absolutely great plan for us and he's able to perform it. Let me say this to you, that in all of your life's areas, which is what Zacchaeus was saying, we need to turn over our life to God and say, I have trust in you that you're going to make it complete. You're going to get me to the other side. You're going to allow me to then be fully restored. And I thank you for it. All I have to do is just touch the hem of your garment. I know I will be made whole. All I have to do is just think about walking on water and you will tell me to come to you. You will have me get out of my own boat. You'll part red seas in front of me. You'll allow me to cross through on dry ground. You'll even give me pots that as the oil keeps flowing, it gets it keeps pouring out. You will provide for me. You will protect me. You will do all of that because you see me and you know me. It reminded me of the 139th Psalm. And we know the 109th Psalm that says, Lord, you searched me and you've known me. You know my sitting down and you know my rising up. You know when I'm standing and when I'm sitting. You know every single word that is on my tongue before it even comes out of my mouth. But it goes on to say, after all of that, I have to recognize that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. That my soul knows right well. We need to get to the point where we see ourselves through the eyes of the cross, recognizing that God knows us better than we know ourselves. And even in the midst of that, he knows the giftings he's given us. He knows the talents he's given us. He knows the direction he wants us to go in. He knows the destiny that we have. He knows the influence as well as the impact that he wants us to make. Let's not shortchange that. So our first prayer would be, Lord, let me see myself the way you see me. I want to see that I am truly fearfully and wonderfully made. I want to value who I am. I want to see myself as that treasure that you have in this earth and vessel. I want to believe that eye has not seen and ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that you have planned 
for me. I know you have great plans for me. It's for good and not for evil to give me a hope and an expectation of a great end. But it's also in the 26th Psalm. I was reminded of that one. And I wanted to go there just to make sure I pointed that one out to you as well. And it just simply says, vindicate me, Lord. This is coming from the Holman Christian Standard Version. Vindicate me, Lord, because I have lived with integrity and have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and mind, for your faithful love is before my eyes, and I live by your truth. And it continues to go on. But God, I have done this. You've seen me. You know the hairs that are on my head, whether they're gray or not. You know everything that I have done, past, present, and future. But my past is just as small as that rear view mirror is compared to the windshield that I have in front of me, which represents my future. So God, you see me and I am so thankful that you have called me to this particular place and you've called me into relationship with you and you see me. So not only Lord, help me to see myself through your eyes, but Lord, I thank you for seeing me, all of me. And then finally, I know that I can trust you that you have, you know me better than I know myself, but you also have the best plan for me. That should increase our faith. This eighth section, to be seen. So let's go ahead and bow. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you, God, because you truly do see us. See us through these next few weeks and months, see us through the crisis and the chaos, see us through other people's preferences, but your controlling desire and your desire to really have us to be the light in this dark world. Help us to be the salt and light, Lord. Help us to not be controlled by others, but be controlled by you. Help us to bring every thought captive into the obedience of Christ. Help us to walk out your purpose and your plan for each and every one of us. But most of all, Lord, Help us to see ourselves through the cross, through your eyes of love, and then help us to also see others through those same eyes. Father, we'll bless you, we'll honor you, and it's in Jesus' name that we do pray and give you thanks. Amen. Well, it truly has been my pleasure, and as we go into this Thanksgiving season, I want to take a pause here for a moment and say thank you for listening. Thank you for being encouraged by this word. If it has been an encouragement for you, go ahead and drop a comment. Also, let me know where you're listening from. I am just so appreciative of the fact that I get an opportunity to serve. And I thank you for that. I bless you for that. I ask that you also share it if it has truly been an inspiration and a blessing to you. 2020 and 2021 have been different years for us and it has stretched us way beyond our normal borders. But you know what? It's all to God's glory. And so for that, I am so appreciative. Have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day and a thankful Thanksgiving. You can find us online at H, the number two, H, truth, Dot org. At Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, we're helping believers live an abundant life based on God's word, standing on his promises, walking out his principles, sharing with God's people, serving as unto the Lord.